Can a caulk or sealant block out sound? The answer is definitely yes. I'm doing a quick little renovation in the shop. I've got neighbors beyond this wall and I wanna cut down on noise passing between the rooms. This is tricky because this isn't a new build where I can control all the factors from the start, but I used a few methods that have really helped and it made me think I should really explain how some of these soundproofing concepts work. So that's what I'm talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. So there are really three different methods for cutting down on sound transference through walls. The first and probably best overall method is known as decoupling. Sound travels in waves through the air, and when it hits a solid object, it becomes a wave in that object. It passes through it and it becomes airborne again, just a little weaker. Decoupling is when you put an air gap between two walls and materials. So the sound waves have to repeat the process and they often don't have enough energy to do it. You can literally build two two by four walls that have an empty space between them. By decoupling the two walls, noise vibrations will sort of isolate and die down between them. You can also do this in one wall by staggering studs on a wider plate. You can use a two by six plate with two by four studs offset from side to side. This way, no single stud connects the drywall on both sides, so sound can't jump from one side to the other. There's also a product called hat channel or furring channel that connects to a wall surface or framing members, often with clips. Drywall then connects to this metal rail and the rail creates a decoupling buffer between the structure and the drywall. It's pretty common in new builds and it can also help flatten walls and ceilings. So that's how decoupling works. And as I understand it, this will really help with high frequency noise, but doesn't do as well with low frequency. To do that, you have to add mass to the wall. Essentially, you need denser materials, and drywall is actually really great for that. When building new structures, installing two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on top of each other is highly effective at dampening noise, especially if you stagger the seams so they don't line up. But to get maximum effect, you also want to separate the two drywall layers as well. And to do that, you want to use some of these caulk type products. A company called Green Glue is kind of the industry leader on this. They're not my sponsor, they just have a couple really great products. The first is a dampening compound. It's meant to be squeezed onto one drywall surface in a 3 8 inch bead and zigzagging stripes. Then the compound stripes are compressed between two pieces of drywall. Trapped inside here, they do something really crazy. As sound hits the one drywall surface, vibrations bend the wall ever so slightly. This creates shear forces in the compound, sort of like sideways stretching. This causes the sound vibrations to kind of get like knocked out of line or scrambled. And what happens to them? They turn into heat. It's strange to think about sound turning into heat, but that's actually what happens to a lot of expended energy. The sound waves just sort of cease to exist. They burn themselves out. So a double drywall layer with a noise proofing compound core is really a great way to reduce low end frequencies, but it'll still have a weakness. That's the perimeter of the wall in any penetrations that pass through the wall. Sound can still easily escape through these cracks and it'll really be a lot louder than you expect. That's what was happening in this unfinished wall behind me and especially this door. Sound was pouring through these gaps. So Green Glue and other companies make noise proofing sealants that are designed to fill these gaps. This is not noise proofing compound. It's a different product. It's a lot like caulk and you can just extrude a bead into gaps and crevices and it seals the separations. You can add it to outlet boxes too, or in my case, this doorknob hole that was interfering with my drywall. But it too utilizes a method of shearing off sound waves and neutralizing them. This is why in new drywall installations, if soundproofing is gonna be an issue, you really wanna leave like a quarter inch gap around the entire wall and between drywall panels. It needs that little gap to do its work as a buffer. But it's paintable and you can mud and tape directly over it after 48 hours. You can tool it with your finger or with drywall knives. You just don't want to fill a gap wider than maybe 3 eighths of an inch without using backer rod. And the third thing you want to focus on for soundproofing, which I also did in this door bay back here, is absorption. Some materials like foam and insulation just absorb sound well. It's similar to sound dampening, but a slightly different process. Mineral wool is said to be the best sound absorbing insulation, but normal fiberglass bats actually work well too. So I just stuffed the bay with pink insulation behind my drywall and sealed around with green glue sealant. The fiberglass will deaden more of the sound trying to bounce through that hard door and the sealant will catch what slips around the edges. 
Moving blankets are also highly absorptive for sound, and I'm draping one on the far side of this other door. This way I can still go through it occasionally. But overall, you wouldn't believe how much quieter it is in here now. It's gonna help my shooting schedule, and I'm really happy with it. I'll link various tools and products seen here below. Feel free to shop those links if you're interested in anything. And also, let me know if you found this soundproofing discussion helpful. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.